Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, members and friends of First United Presbyterian Church in Houston, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining in with me and everyone else this morning as we worship online together. Before we begin our worship service this morning, I do want to share with you that we are continuing our online worship at least through next Sunday, April 26th. Session continues to meet each week via teleconference to reevaluate what our options are moving forward. Uh, the church secretary, Angie, is monitoring the church phones, and I am always available on my cell phone, which can be found on the contacts portion of the church website. A session will reevaluate if any additional measures need to be taken or if we need to continue the closure of the church office and continue our online worship beyond uh, April 26th. Our stewardship and mission committees remind everyone that your gifts and tithes may be mailed to the church office at 102 North Main Street, Houston, Pennsylvania, or dropped off in the church mailbox. Meals on Wheels continues to operate out of the church, and your donations are vital to the ongoing ministry of First United Presbyterian Church in Houston, Pennsylvania, in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. If you joined us in previous weeks for our online worship, at first it might sound a little weird, but we do our call to worship responsibly. If you are gathered around your computer or your smartphone, I encourage you to speak out loud the responsive portions of the worship service, knowing that you are not alone, that you are joining in with countless others of the church triumphant and worship of Jesus Christ. I do also want to extend a special thank you to Karen and Johnny as we are uh, working on incorporating music with our online worship. Uh, but as I continue to be quarantined, we're not able to do this all together. So ahead of time, uh, Karen and Johnny have recorded the, the music and I'm sharing that during our time together. So please um, sing out nice and loud. Uh, we might not uh, be able to be physically together, but I encourage you to sing nice and loud so your neighbors can hear you because soon we will be together again, able to hug and shake hands. But until then, trust and know that we are united together as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, with confidence in God's amazing love for us, let us worship God together. My friends, please join with me in the call to worship. Protect us, O God, for in you we take refuge. You are our Lord. We have no good apart from you. The Lord is our chosen portion, our cup. You hold our lot. Let us bless the Lord who gives us counsel. Because he is at our right hand, we shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. You show us the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Therefore, we will praise you forevermore. My friends, as we continue our time of worship, and as we are joined together on this, the first Sunday following Easter, uh, we do need to confess our sins. We do need to confess how much we still need Easter Sunday and the empty tomb to take away our sins. Trusting in God's love for us, let us join together in the unison prayer of confession. Wondrous God, we confess that at times our doubts and fears override our hope and faith. Forgive us when we lose sight of the joy of your love and instead fall into despair and gloom. Lift up our hearts, Lord, and help us to remember the promise of new life here and now, not just the hope of resurrection for the future. We give thanks for your Son, Jesus the Christ, who continues to offer us new life, who continues to turn us around and upside down who continues to break down the walls of death in our own life. Forgive us, 
restore us and renew us. My friends, let us join together in a time of silent confession. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. My friends, hear the assurance of pardon. Hear these words from 1 Peter. Even though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice. You are receiving the outcome of your faith, salvation. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Now let us join together, sing out nice and loud as we join together in singing Because He Lives.
Thank you, Karen and Johnny. Uh, now at this time, we can turn our attention to our scripture readings for today. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm chapter 16. Uh, if, you can, if you have your own Bible at home, please open it up and follow along. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our New Testament reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So how are you? Seriously, how are you? Have you stopped to check in with yourself lately? Now, right now, not in a little bit, but right now is a great time for you to stop and check in with yourself. Maybe check in with your spouse or with your kids or grandkids or your brother or sister, nieces or nephews, whoever you might be with to check in with them. If you're by yourself, well, in a moment will be a great time to check in. But how are you doing? Are you hanging in there? So much has been going on lately that there's almost a, a hectic feeling in the air. Even though many folks are stuck at home, you know, most people these days are not running around with a bunch of errands to do, only essential trips. Even though many people are stuck, there's still this sense of, of unease that a lot of people seem to be experiencing. When is this all going to be over? When are we going to get back to normal? Whatever normal that may be, when are these uncertain times going to be in the rearview mirror? Just a distant memory? Is it time to move on yet? My family has been in quarantine for 24 days. And I don't know about you, but I'm starting to look like I might be getting the quarantine 15. 
that I'm going to have to be working off as soon as this time is over. You know, my kids have not left our property for going on 37 days. That's right. The last time my kids left our home property was Friday, March 13th. But even with those restrictions, even with us being kind of stuck at home, uh, with the help of technology, with uh, Zoom videos, teleconferencing, social media, even the old-fashioned phone call, I've still been able to stay in touch with some folks, and there just seems to be this general sense of what in the world is going on, and when are we going to get back to normal? As I imagine many of you have been doing, and if you haven't, well, then you need to tell me your secret and what you have been doing because you're pretty amazing. But if you're like me, you've probably watched a lot of television lately. These past 24 days, I, I might have uh, I've run out of things to, to stream. I've run out of, of reruns of sports. I've watched a lot of TV, unfortunately, and... Uh, and more and more as the time has progressed during these past 24 days of quarantine, I've seen commercial after commercial say roughly the same thing. And maybe you've heard it too. Uh, it seems to be uh, the beginning or end of so many different commercials, the same phrase. During these uncertain times, have you heard that phrase? It seems to be in a lot of commercial and or in uh, uh, insurance commercials and car commercials and all different things during these uncertain times. That phrase has been stuck in my head during these uncertain times. All week long, it's been in my head, and, and I don't think it's just because of what's going on in the, in the world right now in the year 2020 but because this is the week after Easter. Almost always I, I find myself in the week after Easter stuck with the disciples, hiding out, wondering what is going on, what is going to happen next. Our Lord, our leader, our teacher, our Messiah, the Son of God was just crucified. They're out looking, rounding up his followers. The Roman soldiers are everywhere. They're looking for anybody who was seen associating with Jesus. They think that one of us probably stole the body. What is going to happen next? Nothing is going the way that it should be. Uncertain times indeed. During these days of uncertainty, what did the disciples do? Now, normally on the Sunday following Easter, I would find myself reading from the end of John chapter 20, where we hear the story of Thomas encountering Christ. Now, in Scripture, he's referred to as Thomas the twin. But for years since then, he's been known as Doubting Thomas. For one moment of weakness... He's been labeled forever, and we forget how much good he has done, evangelizing across the continent, teaching about Jesus, a saint revered in India for how many people's lives he's changed in the name of Christ. Normally, I would read from John 20, where we hear about Thomas saying that he would not believe unless he saw the wounds, placed his own hands inside the side of Jesus, and Jesus meets him and shows him his wounds and tells Thomas that he is blessed because he has seen, but even more blessed are those who believe and have not seen. But this week, I was reading through the lectionary, which included John 20, and these words from 1 Peter just seem so strong and poignant and appropriate and compelling for today, April 19th, 2020. 
First Peter, the author says, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Many people right now are suffering, feeling like they're going through a trial. Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire. My friends, you may be at home right now, struggling, suffering, uncertain about unemployment, uncertain about your health insurance, uncertain about a loved one in the hospital, uncertain about fill in the blank, times of uncertainty, and you feel like your faith is being tested. You see, the author of First Peter, I believe, is saying that, that your faith, your faith is more precious than gold, and that gold is tested by fire. Your sufferings might feel worse than a hot flame, but your faith will also, just like when gold goes through a fire, your faith will be made stronger, made more pure. Your faith will be forged when it goes through the fire of these trials. Your faith will be made stronger as it is forged in the fires of your suffering, your trials, these days of uncertainty. Your faith is being forged stronger through these uncertain times. But that phrase, uncertain times, it's been rubbing me the wrong way all week long. Because if we're honest, what times are actually certain? What times are actually certain and for sure? We all know that really the only thing that is sure is change. We wake up and we think that things will go a certain way, but so many times the day we expect is not the day we experience. Let's just be honest with ourselves. All times are uncertain. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Well, almost nothing. Uncertain times. The certainty and security that we spend so much time and money and effort trying to surround ourselves with is nothing compared to the certainty and security of God's love in Jesus Christ. It's not just these times that are uncertain compared to the love of God through Jesus Christ. Everything is uncertain. The only thing that is steadfast and true, the only thing that is certain in this life and the next is the love of God through Jesus Christ. And yet I'd be lying if I said that these days don't feel more uncertain. If I said that these days don't feel more insecure than others. But my friends, my prayer for you this first Sunday after Easter, this first Sunday that we, we gather again to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I pray that your faith will be forged stronger by this fire, that you will continue to hope for that which is unseen, that you will place your faith not in politicians or, or vaccines or stimulus checks or the next toilet paper delivery, I pray that you will place your faith, place your trust in the risen Lord, and that you would begin to receive the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul through Jesus Christ. Nothing is certain, nothing is sure, except for the love of God through Jesus Christ. My friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
Now, my friends, let us join together in singing Amazing Grace. Thank you again to Karen and Johnny. Um, my friends, I will be honest with you, one of the things that I miss so much about us gathering together is our time when we can lift up our joys and concerns before one another. Um, when we can pray for one, or, one another by name, I am reminded of the story of a, of a farmer who was out in his field and he couldn't remember his prayers for the day, so he said, Father, I'm going to say the alphabet three times, and I trust that you'll put the letters in the right order so that you know the prayer that's supposed to be prayed. My friends, if you have any joys or concerns that you wish to share with your church family, please give us a call, send us an email, but trust to know that we are praying for you, we are praying for one another, and our Father in heaven knows your prayers that weigh in the silence of your hearts, and so we lift those prayers up together. My friends, with faith and um, the assurance of God's love for us, knowing that God answers our prayers, sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes not just yet. Let us approach the throne of the Lord during this time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the joy of technology and the opportunity to worship together with our family and friends, even if we are not able to be seated next to them. We pray, O oh God, that you would bring us together in person again uh, so that we may lift our voice in song, that we may gather in your sanctuary and praise you together in person. But until then, O oh God, we do give you thanks for all the ways that you have blessed us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for uh, so many people who are sacrificing their time and their talent, uh, who are striving to bring healing in this world. Well, we pray for doctors and nurses, for caregivers, for uh, fire, police, uh, emergency medical uh, providers, for so many people 
who are helping to take care of us and our loved ones. We pray for them, oh God. We ask that you would be with them and keep them uh, during uh, these days ahead. We pray, oh God, for the leaders of our communities, of our country. Help, uh, help our leaders to make good decisions. Help them, uh, grant them your wisdom, oh God. Help them to seek uh, to do good in this world. You know, we pray for the leaders of this church. Help us to lead your people during these, these different days ahead. Help us to find new, exciting, and imaginative ways to share your love with those who are in need. God, we trust in the movement of your Holy Spirit that we are not alone during these days, that you have a plan for us, for this church, for our community. And we just pray, oh God, that you would help us to live into that plan. God, we take a moment now to lift the prayers that do weigh in the silence of our hearts. God, I pray for those who are struggling this day, who are struggling with loss, loss of a loved one, loss of employment, loss of security, God, those who are living in fear, fear of the unknown, fear of not knowing where their next meal may come from, fear of not knowing if they'll be able to pay their rent or their mortgage, fears of the unknown, oh God. And so we pray to you, help us to make you known to them so that they would not lose hope. Help us, oh God, to be a beacon of your love right where we are so that all would know of your amazing love shown to us through the risen Lord, your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Holy God, we pray all of this using the words that Jesus taught the disciples saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, I do remind you that even in these uncertain times, you are not alone. The love of God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit is with you this day. So I remind you, my friends, that the grace of God the Father, the peace of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the risen Lord, is with you right now and always will be. Amen. Thank you. 